Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, hi, my name is Busabi Moliayo and I am a registered nurse and a registered midwife. On this channel, I talk about content related to nursing and healthcare. If you're interested in content like that, do click on the subscribe button to join the YouTube family and also on the bell icon so you don't miss out whenever I drop another amazing video. With that being said, let's get into today's topic. today's video we're going to be talking about diuretics in my video where i discussed antihypertensive medications i mentioned diuretics if you have not watched that and you're interested in learning about antihypertensive medications you can click this link up here and you can go and watch that so i mentioned diuretics as part of the medications that i use to manage hypertension but i also promise to dive into diuretics and discuss it extensively in another video which i'll be doing today so based on definition diuretics are actually medications that improve or cause the body to produce more urine that is basically what diuretics do and there are different classes of medication under this diuretic umbrella but before we can understand how each type of diuretics work we have to do a basic revision of how the body forms urine so let's go back to the nephron we all remember that the nephron is the basic structural and functional unit of the kidney and it is responsible for urine formation now let's quickly discuss the urine formation process and how each part of the nephron functions the first part of the urine formation process is the filtration which happens in the glomerulus and let's not forget the glomerulus is a network of capillaries where filtration occurs and what really happens during filtration is that the glomerulus acts as a sieve like normal sieve where you use to sieve your rice or drain your yam or beans whenever you cook and you want to drain out water that is what the glomerulus actually acts as so it helps the body to filter the waste product and those that are not waste products are returned back into the body that is what happens in the glomerulus the next step of the urine formation is the reabsorption which happens in the proximal covalated tubules and loop of NLA as well as the distal covalated tubules these three portions are the, ne are the next part of the nephron that actually follows the glomerulus and what happens during reabsorption is that useful substances like water, glucose, amino acids and ions are reabsorbed from the filtrates like what the glomerulus has also already filtered they are returned back into the bloodstream because the body needs them via active transport passive transport and facilitated diffusion these are the measures through which the body takes back those useful um, in useful nutrients or useful elements or substances that have already been filtered that is reabsorption the next part of the urine formation is the secretion and what happens in secretion is that there is additional waste products like drugs ions that are actively transported from the bloodstream into the tubules to be eliminated in urine so you, you, i need you to like Follow me to understand what happens when the body is forming urine so that you know what part of the nephron that any type of diuretic is going to be acting upon. Now let's talk about the different types of diuretics and how they work. The first type of diuretics that I'm going to be talking about are the thiazides. And how these thiazides work basically is that they act on the distal covalated tubules of the nephrons in the kidney and stop them from reabsorbing sodium and water back into the body so this will cause you to pee out or to urinate a lot of water that is how thiazides work basically very common examples of these drugs are hydrochlorothiazide and chlorothiazide the next type of diuretics i'm going to be talking about are the loop diuretics and just from the name loop meaning that they act on the part of the nephron that is called the loop of enli and what they do is that they stop the reabsorption of sodium potassium chloride and water causing the body to excrete them in urine that they excrete a lot of it in urine common examples of loop diuretics are furosemide and bumetanide the next class of diuretics that i will talk about are the potassium sparing diuretics when patients that have heart failure or some other heart conditions are placed on diuretics loss of potassium ions in urine usually affects them because their condition is actually sensitive to the loss of potassium so in situations like this patients like that may have to undergo um potassium replacements in which they would inject potassium to IV fluid and give it to them via parenteral route or they are placed on 
placed on potassium sparing diuretics these are the types of diuretics that allows you to excrete a lot of urine while still making the body take or retain potassium ions because of what the body needs it for that is basically how they work common examples of potassium sparing diuretics are spirulolactone and amyloride we also have another class of diuretics that are called the osmotic diuretics and what they do basically is that they increase the osmolarity of your urine that is what the urine contains they are non-absorbable solutes your body doesn't absorb them a very common example of an osmotic diuretic is manitol i hope you guys were able to understand the basic pharmacology behind diuretics if you want to see more of my videos where i simplify the pharmacology of different medications you can click here and i'll see you in my next video bye